So I'm going to show how to use the central limit theorem to compute confidence intervals. So to do that, let's introduce a temporary variable, we'll call that z. And let z be distributed normally with a mean one, a mean zero and a standard deviation or variance of one. So what we call the n zero one distribution. And so if we draw this, the distribution for the density function for z, it's going to be centered in zero, and we're going to have sort of a bell-shaped curve like this, which is symmetric and asymptotically goes to zero. And what I want to do is essentially to bound the probability mass. So let's say I have a, a confidence bound in percentage. So let's say I want a confidence bound of 95%. So what do I mean by that? I want to say that with 95% probability, uh, the population mean lies close to the sample mean. So for now, we'll just call this 95%. Let's just call this 1 minus alpha. So alpha equals 5% or equals 0 0.05. Okay, so for the normal distribution, it turns out that if you're given a particular value, such as alpha equals 0 0.05, we can compute two values. This is the standard tables, which will tell us these two values, such that, and we'll call these two values minus z alpha uh, by two, and plus z alpha by two. And so the z alpha means that this is is a, a z, it's a, the z is a normal variable, z sub alpha means that it is, corresponds to a confidence bound of 5%, and it's symmetric about zero, so that's why it's minus z alpha by two, by two and plus z alpha by two. And so what you're saying is that the probability mass in the center is going to be one minus alpha, and the remainder is equally split on both sides. And so we can uh, more precisely say that the probability that minus z alpha by 2 is less than z is less than z alpha by 2 is going to be equal to 1 minus alpha. So so these two symbols over here, z alpha by 2, are, are these basically these same things that I have over there. And all this is saying is that the, the random variable z has a probability of 1 minus alpha, like 95%, to be within this range. Okay. So uh, now remember that z is a, is, a, is a normally distributed random variable, and from the central limit theorem, we are stating that the variable square root n, xn bar minus mu over sn is distributed normally at 0, 1. And so therefore, the same exact equation is going to hold true, which means that the probability that minus z alpha by two is less than uh, square root n over sn xn bar minus mu is less than z alpha by two is going to be uh, equal to one minus alpha. So, so we're bounding the values of this, and with a little bit of rearrangement, we can say that the probability that xn bar minus z alpha by two, uh, sn by square root n is less than mu, is less than uh, z alpha by two, sn by square root n, uh, plus xn bar, so I forgot that, is equal to 1 minus alpha. And, and so what you're saying really is that there is this range xn bar uh, plus minus uh, z alpha by 2 sn by square root n, and mu lies in this range. Okay, mu lies somewhere in this range, and so this is exactly what we need. Why? Because um, we want to know where mu lies. And so we're saying, okay, here is my xn bar. And I want to say that mu lies somewhere over here with probability greater than one minus alpha. And exactly that's what it is. So we're saying mu lies in this with probability, with probability 
equal to one minus alpha. And so uh, look at the uh, what we have. So this one we can just measure. We can just re compute this xn over xn bar. S n we can compute because again that's just the variance of xn bar. That's straightforward. N we can get because it's a number of runs. And z alphabet two is from the standard tables. It says if you know alpha, you know the z alphabet two for a normal variable. And so all of these are known, and the only kind of thing that's unknown to us is how many runs to do. So here's the algorithm. We choose a particular value of n, and we compute this quantity over here, x plus minus this, and that tells us where mu is. And if n is small, then so let's say this is xn, xn bar. When n is small, this range is going to be pretty large. As we increase the uh, number of simulations greater and greater, the range in which mu will lie will become narrower and narrower, and then it'll be sufficiently narrow, it's going to sort of in this particular range, and you can say, okay, I have enough, uh, I have run enough simulation runs so that for this value of n, I've computed Sn, I've computed Xn bar, and the uh, mu is going to lie in this particular range, with probability more than 95%. So we call that the 95% in this case, 95% confidence interval. So we have 95% confidence that mu lies somewhere over here in this range. And if this range is quote unquote narrow enough, that's up to you uh, what narrow enough means. But if you know it's narrow enough, then uh, you, you, you're done. You can stop running simulations. So that gives us the stopping rule, which is just what we want.